Hello, and welcome to the Godly Playroom at First United Church in Wetaspan, Alberta. My name is Ruth Lummox, and I am so blessed to be able to be in this room, surrounded by these stories, and to share some of them with you. We are in the season of Easter, in that time of celebration that is so big it spills out into six whole weeks all the way to Pentecost. We are in the fifth week of the season of Easter and we are getting closer to Pentecost. During this time we are coming to know Jesus in a new way just as those first disciples did. I wonder what you need to be ready today. You might like to get a candle so that you can have that ready. Maybe a battery operated one or if you're okay to use matches and light a candle then feel free to do that. You might also like to have some art materials. Whatever you have at home. It doesn't have to be fancy but it can be. But pretty much everybody has magazines or newspapers they can cut up, scissors, some glue, some crayons or markers, maybe even some paints. There are lots of things with which we can create and let that creative process take place in us so that the story continues to become part of who we are. You might also like to get some feast things ready. Again, it doesn't have to be elaborate. It is about the company that we share when we feast together. So today I think I just have some water and some grapes. Just enough to wet my whistle and give me a little more energy boost towards the end of the day. Hmm. I think I have everything I need to be ready. I wonder what you need to do or to be to help you settle into this time and place with one another and with the holy. I wonder how your week is going. So many of us are longing for spring that every warm day people are so much happier and every time it gets cooler or we see some of that snow stuff, we're not too happy anymore. It feels like the earth is taking a long time to get ready for spring this year. <clears throat> but the birds and the plants are going ahead anyways and so we will too. So let's take a deep breath together and another one and one more. We have this amazing new huge candle and it is a reminder that in this season we are having so many new experiences. We remember that once there was someone who said such amazing things and did such wonderful things that people began to follow him. And the more they followed him, the more they wondered who he was. And one time they just had to ask, Who are you? And the one time, when they asked him that question, he said, I am the light. See how the light grows whenever it's shared?
I am definitely enjoying not just this light, but the light in the morning and at night as the daylight hours lengthen. I'm going to put the light back on the shelf though, so it doesn't get in the way. This is a huge story today. <clears throat> and I'm just going to reset the camera so that you can see this story. And then I'll see you back here in a moment. In that first week in the season of Easter, we remember how the women went to the tomb expecting to find a body, but it was empty and the stone had been rolled away. When they told the others, many didn't believe them. And yet the women and soon the other disciples would come to know Jesus in this new way, in his absence. In the second week of Easter, we remember the disciples who traveled from Jerusalem to Emmaus when they were joined by a stranger. They invited him at the end of their journey to join them for a meal, and when the stranger took the bread and blessed it and broke it and shared it with them, they knew it was he. And then he was gone. And they were coming to know Jesus in the breaking of the bread. In the third week of the season of Easter, we remember Thomas and the disciples who gathered in fear behind locked doors. And Jesus came into their midst and spoke peace to their fear. And Thomas came to know Jesus in this new way, even in the midst of doubt and fear. In the fourth week of the season of Easter, we remember how the disciples went north to Galilee, about a four-day walk from Jerusalem. And we heard Sherry tell us this story in more detail about how they went fishing one night and caught nothing until a stranger called to them in the morning. They cast their nets on the other side and the nets were so full they couldn't drag them ashore. They were coming to know Jesus, even in the morning. And there was something comforting and familiar in the sounds and smells of the lake and the fire and the taste of fresh bread and fish. The stranger wasn't a stranger. And the disciples were coming to know Jesus even in the morning and in their familiar routines. In this fifth week of the season of Easter, we remember how the disciples were gathered in Galilee they were gathered all together and they went to the mountain to meet Jesus. 
but he was already there. It was good to see him, even in this new way. But what were they supposed to do now? Listen. He was talking. What was that? Something about all authority and in heaven and on earth has been granted to me? What did that mean? Then they heard him say something they could understand, but did not want to hear. Go everywhere. Tell everyone my story. Even this part. Show them how to be good disciples. Tell everyone the story so that they can become a part of it. Baptize anyone who asks in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This was too far to travel. Too much to do. And then in their dismay they heard him say something like, I am with you always to the end of the age. And then he was gone. They must have wondered as they walked back to Jerusalem. Once they had been followers, and now they were leaders. Once they had been sheep, now they were shepherds. They had come home for the last time. And now they would make a home for others. They were coming to know Jesus more fully in this new way. <clears> then <throat> they would know him even better as they made him known. I wonder if there's something in your household that you might like to go and bring to add to the telling of this story. You can pause the video if you want. Take some time perhaps to have a conversation with the other folks in your household about what you might add in or bring if you were in the godly playroom. And when you're finished, perhaps gather your response materials and I'll see you back here for response time. Knowing Jesus in making him known. Knowing Jesus in the morning. Knowing Jesus even in our doubt and fear. Knowing Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Knowing Jesus even in his absence. Welcome back. I wonder what you found for your response materials today. I found some scissors and glue and crayons <clears throat> and I have a piece of paper and I found some odd bits of map from our storage cupboards and I was thinking 
about the journey that the disciples made and how in many ways this time in the season of Easter is is like our own faith journey of coming to know Jesus in new ways. And those disciples traveled literally a long ways. I mean, they went from the hills of Galilee and they traveled around with Jesus for a while and they came down to Jerusalem and then they went back up to the Galilee and then they went back to Jerusalem and in the weeks ahead we hear the stories of them waiting for the Holy Spirit to come and the story of Pentecost and then they went out into that wide wide world to do those things we heard Jesus ask of them today. To go everywhere, to tell everyone, to show them how to be good disciples. I wonder who's helped you be a good disciple or where you maybe first heard the story of Jesus. So I think about myself as a young child and I was born in a place called Atacokan. And that's in Ontario. And it's a very small community. There used to be a gold mine there, but the mine's long since closed and many people have moved away. And from there, we moved north to a place called Flinflon. But I'll back up a bit here. So my name, Ruth, comes from the name of another woman who did a lot of work with young people. And so she showed my mom and dad how to be good disciples. <clears throat> and in turn, they wanted me to know how to be a good disciple. We lived in Flin Flon, which is, has lots of rocks and trees. That's pretty much what it has. And it also had another mining enterprise that stayed open for a little bit longer. It was still open when we lived there. I don't know if you've ever been around a mining town. If there's smelting gold, it smells pretty gross. But that's where we lived. There were lots of lakes and water. And I think about the people there who didn't always have a lot of things. And life wasn't very easy. But they were a very welcoming, welcoming community. <clears throat> Everybody was welcome. <coughs> there were people from other parts of the world different colors and different religions. And everybody worked together. It was a good place to be. And then my family moved from there to a place called Winnipeg. That's where I went to school, and I read lots of books, and I also went to a church there.
And that's where I was baptized. Actually, no, nope, back it up. I was baptized here. So I'll put some water there. But here is where I was confirmed and I made the choice to be a disciple of Jesus. <clears throat> And from there, I got married, and I went to a place called Swan River. And then we went back to Winnipeg. And then we went to a place called Saskatoon. back and forth there a few times and we went to another place called Sturgis and then we went back to Saskatoon and I was ordained there and we went to a place called Russell and then we went from there to Alberta, to here, to Wetaskiwin. And all along those travels and places that I've been, there were people who showed me what it meant to be good disciples. Some of them gave their money generously to something called mission and service. <clears throat> which is sometimes symbolized by the rainbow. When I was in Saskatoon, there were other rainbow people who taught me what it meant to be a good disciple in an inclusive way. So that gay and lesbian and bisexual, transgender, two-spirit, asexual, pansexual, non-binary, queer, that there was room perhaps in this church for people of many different colors and understandings of God. The people in Sturgis and Priestville, where I did my internship as a student minister, were so welcoming. And they helped me become part of their story in a very short time. A story that stretches back for lots of generations of farming people in the same community who valued what it means to be United Church. Even when some of the people around them got very angry because the United Church was a rainbow church. And it was when I came to Alberta that someone else introduced me to godly play. And that really helped me feel like part of all the stories, all of these stories. So I wonder where your faith journey has taken you. And who you've told about Jesus' story. Or how you've invited others to become part of it. You might like to use a real map or draw a map. You might just want to make a list of some of those people who have helped you understand what it means to be a good disciple. I wonder how you have known Jesus in a new way, in a familiar way, as always with you. 
wherever your journey in discipleship has brought you. I'm going to put this away and get ready for feast. You might like to take some more time for your response, so feel free to pause the video and come back whenever you're ready. And if you want to take a moment and get a glass of water or something to drink and something to snack on to share with our feast, that'd be great. We'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. I wonder what you came up with for response time. So many directions we can go. All of them good. Because God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. So let's take some time to give thanks and to remember that goodness. You might want to speak your prayers or name them in silence or sing or dance them. <clears throat> I'll start mine and say Amen and then I'll squeeze your hand and you take the time that you need. If you need more time, know that you can pause the video and come back when you're ready. Thank you, God, for this beautiful day and for all the possibilities it holds. Thank you for the many people who share your love and your story, who encourage faith and invite us to become a part of it. Thank you for entrusting us with telling your story. Give us strength to be a good voice a good disciple, a sign of your visible presence in this world, not just today or when things are going well, but even sometimes when it's hard and we aren't sure what's asked of us or how we are going to do it, or it feels like too much, too much travel, too much to do, Help us to remember that you are with us always. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, still important to keep sanitizing and keeping ourselves clean, minimizing how many other things we touch for other people. I am very grateful to have a glass of water. There are so many places in the world that don't have access to clean drinking water or as much water as we have. <clears throat> and I have some grapes, although I don't think I'm going to manage to eat all of these grapes. I wonder what kind of things you've been doing as part of this spring Easter season. I wonder if you've helped rake a yard. I wonder if you think about that gardening or yard work as one of the ways we can be good disciples. God gifts us with this beautiful world and we have the chance to look after it well or not. <clears throat> Sometimes it helps me when I'm out raking <laughs> or pulling weeds or clearing away some of that 
dead growth from last year. To be a good neighbor to my yard and to this earth and the creatures who share it with me. They are part of God's story too. That's that creation story, right? Where we hear about all the big gifts. Hmm. <clears throat> I wonder if there's a story that you would tell someone else. I wonder what story in the Godly Playroom or in the Bible you like best. Have you ever told anyone what your favorite is? Or have you told them the story? There's something about speaking the words or the story out loud <clears throat> that helps us become part of it. Whenever we're training people to tell godly play stories, I always invite them to think about where do you find yourself entering into the story? What do you like best about it? Are there places that you find it hard to learn the words? Because often those are the places that have the most to teach us about ourselves. Funny thing, that. How we often learn best from those difficult or challenging places in our lives. Hmm. Maybe that's what Jesus meant when he said, tell them the whole story, even these parts. Most of us wouldn't want to have to tell a story about the crucifixion or the stone and the tomb. But that's an important part of the story that comes afterwards too the resurrection, and all the different ways the disciples came to know Jesus in new ways. <clears throat> I was reading about someone who is a Sikh, which is another religion in the world. And he was talking about how dancing brings him joy. And while it isn't a particularly religious expression necessarily, certainly part of their religion encourages them to inspire and be positive and to give people hope. And dancing is one of the things that does that for him. I wonder how your dancing might be a way of coming to know Jesus in a new way. Hmm. We're pretty familiar with some ways of knowing Jesus, <clears throat> but not so familiar with others. Hmm. These are very juicy grapes, which is good. Because I'm pretty thirsty. And before we know it, our time is coming to an end. So watch what happens when I change the light. Right now the light is just in this one place and one time. But when we change it, it can spread out and fill the room, and it will find you wherever you are. Watch what happens. God bless. Be well and look after one another until we meet again. <clears throat>